how many of you have experienced fever, headache, and chills? For most of us, these symptoms indicate that we have the flu. We rest for a few days and then get back to our lives. For millions of people living in Sub-Saharan Africa or Southeast Asia, these symptoms likely indicate the early stages of malaria, and in particularly vulnerable populations like infants, children under five, and pregnant women will progress to severe anemia, organ failure, coma, or death. Malaria is caused by a parasite and is transmitted by the bite of an infected mosquito. Parasites are injected into the skin, make their way to the liver, and eventually produce tens of thousands of a different form of the parasite that can then infect red blood cells. During this blood stage of infection is when symptoms manifest and in vulnerable populations will lead to severe disease. This complex life cycle involving the liver, red blood cells, and the mosquito, as well as the different forms of the parasite at each stage, are just a few contributors to the lack of a fully protective immune response. Over the past several years, the number of people that die from malaria has been significantly reduced to under 500,000 people per year. However, this progress is threatened by increasing drug-resistant parasites, insecticide-resistant mosquitoes, and minimal protection by the most advanced vaccine in the pipeline. To reach the eventual goal of malaria em elimination, it is imperative that we develop a highly effective anti-malaria vaccine. In our lab, we are working to formulate a multi-component vaccine with many different parasite proteins so that we can overcome challenges associated with malaria vaccine development. As I mentioned, the parasite has a complex life cycle and interacts with different cell types in the body. There are also many different types of parasite proteins that are exposed to the immune system, all of which make it easier for the parasite to escape detection and clearance by our bodies. A unique way that our lab tries to overcome this problem is by using a larger parasite protein as a fusion partner for smaller and more relevant parasite proteins. This larger fusion partner activates the immune system in a way that helps our bodies to produce a more robust and more effective immune response against that smaller partner protein, which we know to be associated with protection. We are working to evaluate several parasite surface proteins present during the blood stage of infection as fused and non-fused proteins. Eventually, we will combine these blood stage vaccine candidates with a parasite protein that is essential for transmission ideally producing a vaccine that reduces the severity of disease, protecting the individual from death, as well as blocking transmission.